Today on In the Woodyard, you finally get to hear and see about the Ultra Easton made wood splitter. Today's the day. It's exciting. Here we go. So it's finally here. I'm going to talk about the Easton made Ultra. Today's the day. It is now about, I think, a month and a half since I've had it. I've already split just over a hundred face cords with it. So I really didn't want to talk about it until I actually used it for a while and got a really good test out of it. Uh, it was uh, awesome to use and you're going to see a lot of videos coming up of me actually splitting with it. But I thought I'd start out with a review first and then you can watch all the stuff splitting uh, that I did with it. Um, great machine. Absolutely love it. Um, my initial score right off the bat, 9.9. .9. And I would give it another tenth, but it took too long to get. That was my only complaint. Uh, obviously, they make such good equipment. Everybody wants it, and they just are working hard trying to pump them out. And Andrew and the boys up there in Canada, Canada, a, eh? they are uh, <laughs> they're working hard. So, anyway, we're going to do a little review here. I'm going to talk about all the things about it that I like, and the things, the little things about it that kind of popped up, that, you know, that I didn't really expect. So I'm going to. I wrote a bunch of notes, so I'm going to talk about each thing. So here we go. Right. Okay, first thing that I really like about it, I like the, the symmetrical design, the ambidextrous feature, I call it, where you can be standing right here on this side and operate your lever, and you can go over to the other side, because if you're splitting for 8 or 10 hours, I find out, you start to get a sore shoulder on one side or the other, because you're either pulling or that hand's doing a lot of the woodwork, so it's nice to switch it up, kind of go side to side. Plus, if you got two guys, which I've done a couple times, and we're going to do it today, um, with two guys, it's really nice because one guy takes one side and he's on the wood pile side, so he's constantly bringing material to be split, and then I'm running the lever and splitting and chucking, so you can really, really produce a lot of wood, but with two people, you can crank it out, and I think very easily you can do a little over a full quart an hour, um, which for a small machine is pretty, pretty sweet. Another thing I really like is I got the four-way four blade was included with it, but I got the single wedge after watching Joe on Joe's Premium Firewood because I watched him trying to split some bigger stuff with the, the four-way wedge and some of the bigger chunks weren't going through or they were flipping over. And by getting the single wedge, what I do is I split everything I can with the four-way as much as possible. But if I get big, nasty, gnarly chunks that have knots or pieces that are just really big, I throw those to the side and I put my single wedge on. Really, really easy to do splitting with a single wedge with the big chunks. Because with the four way, you got pieces falling all over and they're coming over the top and they don't split all the way through, especially if it's knotty. So the single wedge was definitely a, a good purchase. What I really like too is they got this little button right here, down here. And what happens when you slide it in, it doesn't drop all the way through. It gets caught right here, so it doesn't drop through. Then you just lift it up, and I can change change everything all by myself without any help. Um, it's not that hard at all. Um, I do find, though, that when you take the four-way wedge off, I stand right up on top of the, the table here so I can lift it straight up, because this thing is all of, I don't know, 60 pounds. I don't know if it should weigh it, 60, 70. It's heavy. Um, and it's adjustable up and down, which is really nice, but I found once I got it to a certain point as far as the adjustment holes here for the height going up and down on the wedge when you get it to a certain size it it actually uh, is very efficient you don't have to adjust it hardly at all um, so I really didn't move it once I got it in place I mean I adjusted it in the beginning just to kind of get used to it so so the wedges are awesome so there you go I already got all the paint polished off of this puppy okay next thing I really like is that obviously the control can be operated from front or, or either side left or right but the main thing the main reason i got this splitter was the speed um, i looked at a lot of different splitters that were reasonably priced um, i looked at a lot of the kinetic splitters with the wheel and i liked the speed of them but i uh, what i didn't like was the fact that people had a lot of problems with them jamming up and um, not having the power to go through some bigger pieces. So I felt this was a very good compromise between a, a, a big powerful splitter and a smaller faster splitter. The ram on this, it's like around five seconds and uh, it's about as fast as you'd want it to be because I like my fingers. If it was much faster, it would be even more scary. So you gotta pay attention but because it's in and out of there quick. The one thing I wish I would have gotten on this, I don't know if it's even possible, 
is if I could do this over, or maybe Andrew might think about this in future manufacturing, to have an option where you can buy the automatic return on this. Maybe there's a reason why, I don't know, but that would be nice to have. So you could hit it, grab your next piece, and it would split it through and go back, and you could go again. Maybe it's just because of the size or whatever. So that's another thing I really like. Good there. So now we're gonna talk about the engine. It's a Honda engine. That's about all I need to say. It's a Honda engine. Starts great, runs great. Everything I've ever heard about the Honda engines are awesome, especially the GX series. They say they're like bulletproof. Um, the only thing about it, I have to say, it's thirsty. It uses more gas than my old one. Um, but yeah, it runs almost three hours or so. I something like that on a tank of gas. Um, the one thing that I, the only thing that I don't like about it is that your gas tank's way up on top here. And I use a five gallon gas can. So when you got to fill it up, you got to lift it way up here and it takes a while to dump it out. But yeah, so it's a little hard to get the, uh, the gas in it um, as far as lifting, you know, a full five gallon uh, jugger. Yes, yeah, so I changed the oil on it already. I did that right after regular maintenance. And so yeah, it's working really good so far. Another thing I like, it's got real tires, man-sized tires, and they're C-range tires. So uh, for towing, um, they work fantastic. Um, it's got greasable hubs and everything, so I like that. And uh, down the, the little bit I towed it, it pulls really nice. Um, the, uh, the bigger tires roll around easier in the wood yard, because obviously the bigger the tire, the easier it is to move around, so I like that. So tires are good too, I like that. Okay, another thing I like is it's heavy, a lot heavier than my old splitter. My old splitter was maybe, I don't know, four or 500 pounds. This one's like seven or 800. It's heavy, but I can still move it by hand a little bit. I'm not gonna like, you know, go all over the place, but if I need, need to move it, you know, 10, 20 feet, I find what works easiest is just grab it right here. I can pick it up and I can pull it forward. I can move it backwards. I can move it around so I can, I can position it in a place. Otherwise you can grab the tongue down here you can get a hold of it and you can move it around pretty easily just by hanging onto the tongue. And I can pull it pretty much anywhere in my wood yard um, pretty easily. But I am thinking about getting an ATV for in the winter time, because in the winter time it'll be harder because you'll have ice and chunks and snow and all those kind of goodies. But I can move it around by hand pretty easily because I'm not going big distances like in the woods or anything. It's just around the wood yard and I just go to the pile, move it there and then do the work. Okay, another thing I really like about it when I'm splitting, you'll see it in one of the upcoming videos where I did a whole truckload of wood in two days. That was uh, 15 full cords, so it ended up being like 35 um, face cords. And what I did was I just started with the, the engine part at that end into the wood pile. And then as I split, all my split wood came off the end and I just let it pile up to a big mountain. And by having it all pile up tight here, as the splitter is running, the ram, as it pushes the wood through, it pushes the whole splitter away from the pile and it just gradually works away from the pile, just a little bit at a time. And you'll see that in some of the videos, so I don't have to move it. I just took the tongue off on this end, put it on the other end, and the splitter moves away from the wood, which is really nice. It actually worked itself into the pile of wood that I was splitting on. And then the pile that I had out the back just built up and it worked great that way. So it pretty much moves itself away from the wood. I also like the fact that there's a temperature gauge on the tank and uh, the tank is a nice big tank, holds plenty of fluid. And then up on top here, you can see there's also a pressure gauge. So you can see what kind of pressure you're getting when you're ramming a piece that doesn't want to get split so you don't bust anything. So if it's, I see that needle spike, I back off a little bit. So it's kind of neat to see how everything works with the, the pressure gauge. Okay. This is one, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing, it's just something I found out as I was splitting. Especially when you're using the four away, when you get a piece that comes through and you leave it sit here, and sometimes it'll turn a little bit like this, and you just bring another piece. If you're not paying attention, this piece right here will get pushed into this little uh, ledge, a little edge they have here turned up. And you can see both of these, if you look here, a little zoom in on both of these here. This one right here is bent and this one is bent, because what's happened is a piece will get rammed in there and you're not paying attention, and what will happen is this piece right over here where it's touching will get caught here and then the ram pushes the wood up and then this thing shoots up out of there. So it's gotten bent. So I'm almost thinking, this is just an idea, Andrew, maybe you thought of this, but maybe this needs to be at more of a, a, a slight angle instead of a, 
a tight angle that's 90 degree, maybe like a 45 would be better. So the wood would still stay on there, but it would slide out if, if you get it jammed up. Um, one other thing happened is one time I was splitting and I had pieces here and I was bringing, you know, I had like multiple pieces in here and I brought the, the ram was coming in pushing and I went to grab this piece while the ram was operating and it shoved all the wood tight here and I got my finger smashed right in between here. I quick pulled it out, but I just know now not to stick your fingers in here. <laughs> because they can get smashed. So that's one little thing that happened. Another thing that would be nice to have, it's not a bad thing, because it's on steel on steel, it does need to be lubricated. So I used grease for a while and then I've been using used um, oil from the engine. I have a quart that I saved. I just put a little bit on every once in a while. It would be nice if there was some way there could be a design. And obviously this would cost more money. Some kind of a design that you could have a little tank somehow that you could have like an automatic drip just like on a chainsaw where you have automatic oiling on, on this somehow would be kind of a neat idea. I'm not an engineer, not a designer, but something like that would be nice. So it just you could just fill your your little tank up or whatever, or a reservoir, and it would automatically lubricate it as you're using it. It would be kind of nice to have. But pouring a little bit on here is no big It looks very messy, but I'd rather have it greasy and messy than uh, wear out fast. So there you go. So the only bad thing about it is that it took a long time to get. That's it. Um, so if you want one, order right now. Right now. Call them up. Talk to Jerry with a G or a J, what did I forget what it is? <laughs> G, I think. Call them, order one, because it's going to take a while to get, because the boys are busy up there in Canada. And uh, they're a great machine, and uh, it's working really good, so I like it. I like it a lot. heavy but I can move it around good enough for now I'm definitely gonna want to get a ATV or a tractor if anybody wants to give me a tractor I'll take one Almost had it. <laughs> <laughs> Pin in. Yeah, it would be nice to have a, a hydraulic lever to raise it up and down. But I just find this works good at this height. There's really no reason to move it up and down. So. so that's all the wood that we cut yesterday on the commercial property. It was two full trailer loads full, so about eight somewhere around eight to nine face cords so pretty close to two full cords is what we've got there so we've wheeled the splitter over here 
We're gonna fill it up with some gas and we're gonna start it up and we're gonna split for about three hours. Um, maybe a little less than that, two and a half, three hours, something like that. Well, we've been splitting for about almost two hours, we think, something like that. And we started down here and we got all of this done. And all we got left now is the big stuff up over here. And there's some crotches that we tried, but they kind of got stuck a little bit in the four-way. So we're gonna pull out the uh, four-way wedge. And we're gonna put the single. We're gonna finish up this big stuff here because this big stuff, they get stuck once in a while and you end up fighting them and trying to, you know, they get caught in the wedge and we try to bang them back off because there's crotches and things like that. So we're just gonna put the single on and then go from there. So we should finish this up in half hour, 45 minutes. We'll be all done with all of it. That'll be awesome. So here we go again. Where's the pin? The pin is on this side. You gotta pull, pull that pin down right there. So we're gonna change the change the wedge out and I found this is the easiest way to do it. Wait till I lift up and then you can pull out the uh, okay. pull out the big one. Okay, pull the big one out. You got it? Okay. You're gonna stay right under there okay. and stick it back in. It should be right there. Is that good? Yeah. Got it? Putting the pin in. Okay. It's all of it. There, that's the fastest way to do it. I can do it myself, but it's a lot easier when there's two of us here. And I've been using waste oil for when I changed it to lubricate it, and I've been using this, and I use some grease. I kind of, every once in a while, I just put a little streak on here, and so that's what I'm gonna do before we start it up again. Not much left, I'm just a boat out here, it looks like. Yeah, right down to the end. There we go, so that one's empty. Okay, we're gonna start her up and split again. Here we go.
That's all she wrote. We're done. The whole kitten, caboodle, the whole pile. So here it is. It took longer than I thought it was going to. It probably took three and a half hours, but it's done. And there's got to be at least three full cords there. It's quite a bit of wood, more than I thought it was going to be. We're going to chuck wood from this pile into the trailer. We're going to load it up and then I'm going to haul it and we're going to dump it at a guy's house. He's going to give me a bunch of money. Here we go. Coming up right now. Your first load job, what do you think? Best job I've ever had. That's the only answer you're allowed to give. <laughs> Very good. There we go. So we got it loaded and we're gonna let it sit. Four face cords is what he ordered. So there it is, loaded. success great dumpage so there she be four face cords so I think this is the maybe fourth time I've been here came uh, once one year and then twice last year and now this is the first time this year so I was here when this was a brand new house and anyway there it is that's a nice looking pile of woods I think so, that's it.